Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you the techniques for writing a song. It's a big mystery for some people. How do people come up with these songs? But I've been doing it for a long time. And it's kind of a personal process, but I'm willing to share. So stick around and watch this video. Hi friends, I'm Jeff E.G. A lot of people ask me, how do you write songs? And it really comes down to the genre that you choose because there's different techniques. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced musician that just hasn't gotten into songwriting, this video is going to be really helpful for you. Of course, they are my personal techniques. I hope that you can use them, learn something from them, and apply them to your composition efforts. As I was thinking about how it's done, or at least how I go through the process of writing a new song, it usually starts with one of three or four sources of inspiration. So let's call that the inspiration layer. It could be a loop that I've downloaded and heard. Uh, it could be a drum loop, it could be a guitar riff, could be a set of piano chords. That technique is kind of a fast way to say, I think I can make a song out of that. And what I typically do is alter those loops or those melodies for something that's in my head, something it can become, and then I make it my own and base the rest of the song on that. The traditional sources of inspiration for most of my life have been as simple as picking up a guitar, an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, and coming up with a little riff that I like to play. And I like the sound of that riff and then I'll develop a chord progression around that riff. So it's nothing more than a little bit of a riff and some chords. And I'll record that into my DAW and then build a song around that. Third level of inspiration can sometimes be a rhythmic pattern. It could come from anywhere. It might be a popular song that I've heard and I think, wow, I really like the groove or the feel of that rhythm. Let me try and create something similar on my own. In which case, again, I might pick up a guitar to come up with that rhythm. I might do something quite rhythmic on keyboards with a certain synth sound or a traditional rhythmic sounding keyboard like a clavinet or an organ or piano. Or I might do something with drums. And again, I might program it as MIDI drums with different one-shot samples that I've dragged into a drum kit. The last or the fourth level of inspiration often comes from something that's going on in society that spawns some creative lyrics that have a message for me. They resonate with me personally. It could be political. It could be something going on socially. It might even be a phrase that I hear someone say that to me seems interesting or humorous, and that becomes the basis for some lyrics, almost like developing a poem. I need to build music to go behind those lyrics. So what does it sound like and what does it mean? I might sit down at the piano and play some chords or different parts until I come up with something that fits with the lyrics. So that's a lyrics first approach. So there's four different sources of inspiration. That's kind of the first column of work is what drives the inspiration. The next part of the effort is really the creative orchestration or the arrangement of a song. So I might take any one of those four sources and start breaking it into usable parts like a verse or a chorus or a bridge or a pre-chorus. And that's always been my traditional way of segmenting and managing the arrangement of a song. And then it's filling in the blanks. Okay, in the chorus, I think I need this. And in the verse, I need these different chords. And if I have a drum beat that's been driving my inspiration, I might alter that drum beat between the verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and bridge It'll be similar to my original idea with variations that make up the different parts. Okay, here's an example of a song that started with a rhythmic source as inspiration. And it was actually a drum loop and it sounds like this. C 
see it's a very rhythmic thing, uh, almost a shuffle, and I really like the sound of it. I later added a different drum part using just Logic's drummer, but... And sometimes I mix between those two drum parts, but that rhythm loop inspired me to write this guitar part, which was done in a very simple way. I just plugged my guitar without any effects into my audio interface. See, very little distortion, but later I added compression and reverb and a stereo spread to that particular sound. But it's supposed to sound kind of trebly and and cheap. That was the feel I was after. I felt that that went really well with this drum loop. And then later I decided on a lead, kind of the hook of the song. Sounds like this. And of course, I added some bass parts and, uh, you know, later there's more than one bass. There's all kinds of other parts to this song. As you can see up here, I divided it up into an intro. I've got a verse, a chorus, a bridge, all kinds of other parts that were initially just inspired by nothing more than that drum loop, that rhythmic sound, that groove that I wanted to copy. When I'm doing the arrangement, I might be thinking about lyrics if I don't already have some available. Sometimes I'll have what I would call dummy lyrics, just holding the blank spots. I have an idea like a tag or a hook for the chorus, but I'm not quite sure how to get to those words. And I might rhythmically change the chorus to suit the lyrics so that the lyrics fit in nicely. Similarly, if my original inspiration was a guitar riff and some chords, I don't want the vocal melody to just replicate exactly what the guitar player is playing. I'm looking for a counter melody, something more interesting, that complements the guitar part but doesn't step on its toes. So it still comes through as the hook, but there's a way to fit the lyrics in in a memorable way. So that arrangement or orchestration phase is really where a lot of the creativity comes in. I might create a lot of those parts on my iPad with iOS apps, and then copy them over to my Mac where I would typically put these things together in Logic. Or I might create them on my Mac in the first place, or I might just be playing an instrument where I get an idea and I keep working on that idea until I think it's ready to be recorded. Often a stumbling block for myself and a lot of other musicians is committing to the parts. You know, even after you've gone through the first phase of that arrangement, you're always evaluating, is this really the direction that I want to go? It takes a lot of fortitude to finish an idea. And I'm bad at this myself. You know, I may develop five, six, ten different ideas to this particular point where all of my creative effort has gone into creating the song. And when I get it put together, I decide I don't really like it or it's missing something. Sometimes I need to walk away from that song and go work on another. As I always have a number of songs being developed at the same time, it's not unusual to steal parts from one and put them in the other. Like I, I really like the drum beat of that one, I really like the guitar riff in that one, and merge them together to create one song that I am satisfied with. After I've done the orchestration, one of the other challenges is committing vocals. I can be an adequate singer, or most of my life I've been an adequate singer, but as I've gotten older my vocals just don't cut it. So I'm typically looking for a source for vocals, either working with another artist who can sing, hiring somebody, or bringing in a collaborator that has good vocal capabilities and a good sounding voice that suits the genre of the song that I'm creating. Their input into the song might mean rearranging the parts, or tweaking the lyrics to suit their particular singing style, and even uh, modifying the vocal melody. I might have a vocal melody that I've recorded as a, 
you know, a piano part or even using a synth sound that I think fits into that vocal realm. It's got the same octave range that I'm looking for, but I'm willing to change most of these things. And I think that's important that you, when you do collaborate, you need to be flexible. You have to incorporate ideas from other people. I find incorporating other ideas improves the output, improves the quality of the song. I'm often not satisfied with songs that I've created entirely on my own. And I much prefer to collaborate with someone who can be critical of my ideas and bounce new ideas into the process. After I've got the inspiration nailed down, the creative for the arrangement, I've recorded all the parts and perhaps I've recorded some vocals. The next step is mixing. I may find in my initial mixes that I add effects and I add plugins that help accentuate what I think is important in that song. And I might go through this process multiple times. So I might do an initial mix and bounce that and go listen to it in my car and go listen to it on other platforms, other stereos, or and I'll come back and I'll have a list I've stored of things that I think could be improved or changed. Sometimes that results in starting the mixing process all over again. So I'll put that mix aside and I'll start right from ground zero. I'll say, okay, let's just get the bass and snare, then the drums mixed, add in the bass, and sorry, the kick and snare, and then add in the bass if it's bass guitar or whatever the bass sounds are, synth or otherwise, and then add in the hook whether it's a, a keyboard-based hook or a guitar-based hook, I'll just start right from ground zero all over again. And surprisingly, I'll come up with perhaps a very simplified and different sounding mix for my second try. And I'll go back to the arrangement if necessary in that mix and make a lot of changes, which gives the song a totally different dynamic. It's really interesting to have a second, third or fourth mix of the same song and listen to them in your car or on your iPhone and decide, okay, what do I like of each one of these mixes? You can also send those mixes to friends and get their feedback, you know, kind of a, I guess a market survey or, you know, a market group that might say, oh, I really like the way the guitar comes through in the chorus or something like that. If I get to this point, I'll often complete the song but I may not release the song. I might do a careful analysis of the quality of some of the parts, particularly the vocals and some of the drums and things like that. If I'm not satisfied with the results from my own home studio, because I only have a limited budget for microphones and preamps and a certain amount of software that I use, I might consider going into a studio to redo the vocals using higher quality preamps and mics and the expertise of a professional producer slash engineer. I find if I'm real serious about a song and I think it's got potential, it's actually cheaper for me to go into a studio for that final work than it is to buy that equipment for home. And again, it depends on the genre here because for some traditional rock music or indie music, even R&B and funk, I'll get extreme value out of the studio time, but for a lot of electronic, hip hop, chill, trance type tunes, which are largely using the computer more than the acoustic sounds, uh, there really isn't a huge benefit to me to go into the studio for those. But that's my technique, is putting it all together, analyzing, remixing, and looking for third party support from a professional engineer for that final version. After that mix is complete, I might look for mastering from a mastering service. A couple popular ones that I've used in the past. Doesn't cost too much money, but you have to spend a little bit of money to get your songs mastered before you release them. I use DistroKid um, because it's fairly inexpensive and you can release a song to every platform.
If you're new to this channel and you like this video, click on the like button and consider subscribing. When you subscribe or click on the notification bell, it helps my channel grow. And thank you for watching.